The speedboat race might be one of the reasons why 3D printing transformed forever. Fast printers and speedy Benji prints are more accessible than ever before. Today I show you how to slice as well as how to print a 7.5 minute 3D Benji. I am going to reveal a ton of well kept secrets during the full print of that speedboat. Stick around to learn how you can speed up your prints without sacrificing too much quality. Right here at 24 7 Gaming? Yeah, I recently started playing one of the best and most famous mobile games. An RPG boasting over 700 unique champions, featuring an awesome combat framework, impressive visuals, even on mobile devices, and a dynamic blend of PvE and PvP challenges. Luckily for all of us, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. 5 million monthly active users, as well as impressive user ratings on all platforms can be wrong and I confirm, Raid Shadow Legends is an exceptionally good game. What I like most are the impressive 120Hz visuals on my smartphone and the motivating upgrade system featuring a huge load of artifacts to gear up your champions for combat. And it gets even better. It's free to play and there has never been a better time to start with Raid. We are invited to celebrate Raid's 5th anniversary and that means loads of fun activities and free giveaways for all of us. Use code FESTIVAL5 to get an epic hero right away and plenty of other rewards including free energy, XP boosters and more. That's a crazy head start for new players. And there's more. If you click my link in the description or scan the QR code right there, you get $100 worth of prizes, the epic boss killer Lady Itessa, and of course the exclusive 5th anniversary awards. Have a lot of fun with Raid Shadow Legends. Psst, my clan is called 24 7 Printing. Come and join. For the super fast but ugly speedboats, I use and recommend Idea Maker. I can't tell exactly why, but the sliced cheat codes are faster than others. Printing world's fastest benchy shaped objects like I did is kind of easy on the slicer side to be honest. Just crank up everything speed related until it stops working with your tuned hardware. Today we try to print a halfway acceptable speedboat and I don't want to show these basic principles on a slicer you wouldn't use for anything else than world's fastest stuff. So basically all shown here can be transferred to most slicers, whereas there are specific nuances on each one. Orca slicer has a famous heritage being being a fork of Bamboo Slicer, being a fork of Prusa Slicer, being a fork of Slick 3R. Since Bamboo Slicer has released with the fast X1 Carbon, a lot of new helpful features have been implemented in all of them which help to go fast at quality. Like more detailed speed and acceleration settings as well as setting print speeds in dependence of the overhang angle. But let's go step by step. Since 24.7.0 Beta 2 is based on a Voron 0, we start with the default profile for a Voron 0.1. These settings might be conventionally slow to start with, but that makes a lot of sense as every fresh build Voron Zero is different and it's reasonable to start slow. First of all, a speedboat should stick to the speedboat race rules for comparability. Meaning 0.25mm as maximum layer height, we must use two walls, three bottom and top shell layers, also a must, 10% infill, but it's on you which style you'd use. I prefer a grid pattern for this, as it's one of the fastest ways for speedboats. Slicing a 3D bench with those base requirements set up results in a 37 minute speedboat print. Pretty sobering for a Voron Zero right at the beginning, isn't it? Don't worry, we'll get there. Checking the speeds per layers clarifies, we are mostly moving at around 80 to 100 mm per second, even though speed settings are rather quick between 100 and 200 mm per second, even at default Voron profile. One of the solutions for that problem can be found in the cooling tab of the filament settings. At default Voron PLA profile, the minimum allowed layer time is at a conservative 8 seconds. If a layer would be printed below that time, the printer slows down to the set minimal speed of 10 mm per second. That's very conservative and slow, which most modern cooling solutions outperform easily, but still, that's the absolute right way to start with on a do-it-yourself printer. You can experiment here for speed at sufficient quality or just untick cooling related slowdowns for printing a benji shaped blob. To maintain at least decent quality for our speedboat using the powerful 24-7-0 part cooling system, we can go at one second layer time at a minimum print speed of 70 mm per second. 
This reduces print time from 37 minutes to around 30 minutes, as a lot of features are still limited by the flow rate cap at the bottom of the filament tab. 12 cubic millimeters per second at default are extremely conservative, because that means at a layer height of 0.25 millimeters and a line width of around 0.45 millimeters, we would be limited to around 106 millimeters per second. That's not very speedboat like, and modern hot ends outperform this easily. Here, you need to know the limits of your specific hot end by doing extrusion flow tests or by just experimenting while increasing the values until you have under extrusion on your prints. 2470 has quite some headroom with the Volcomos combination as well as the CHT Volcano nozzle. At regular PLA temperatures, a value of 50 cubic millimeters per second works quite nicely for a speedboat. Though the resulting print time from 30 minutes to around 29 minutes, the impact was rather low. Let's fix that. The speed tab will be one of your best friends for experimenting. Rule of thumb for a speedboat at halfway decent quality, go as fast as possible on the inside, slow down on the outside. Sparse infill, full bore, as it's not visible and the 3D Benchy or other figurines don't need to be strong. Top surface and outer wall, go slower, but let's still set decently fast speeds to hit fast print times. I also doubled the first layer speed and increased the overhang and bridging speeds. And here comes the big bummer. We only saved some seconds despite those high speeds. Why is that? Top speeds are still mostly limited by the flow rate cap, by the layer time and the cooling settings and slow downs due to overhangs. What we can do is to reach the requested top speeds faster by increasing the commanded acceleration. Probably the most important parameter for a speedboat, as all print moves are very short on a 3D Benchy. The performance in acceleration and speed as well mostly depends on your hardware, like motors, the masses to move around, as well as the firmware limits you set on your printer. Again, 2470 has huge headroom for experimenting here, because of using high voltages and currents on the still only two tiny NEMA 14 motors. Using a lightweight X-axis at Bowden extrusion also is a major advantage to go fast. Going at 800 mm per second and 200,000 mm per second squared were great fun to achieve, apply and to watch on my former world's fastest blob shaped object, but that's far from a halfway decent looking result. Also my experimental print at 1500 mm per second and 70,000 mm per second squared were exciting to do and I learned a lot, but that's still not feasible for decent print quality. The truth of high speed at perfect quality will be somewhere between 15k and 30k acceleration, as well as between 200 and 400 mm per second square for quality features on 2470 better too. We're going to explore this in a follow up video, as there is still a lot of testing to do. Today we want to see both a bit of speed and a bit of quality. So I applied some neat acceleration following the same rule of thumb as on the speed settings. Go as fast as possible on the inside, slow down on the outside. So mostly adding zeros to the Voron Zero default profile. The increase in acceleration boosts the speedboat time down to around 15 minutes. That's a step to the right direction, but still far from being impressive, right? Though we haven't touched cornering speeds yet. Jerk, or in clipper language, square corner velocity, defines how fast we go when cornering. From my practical experience, high impact on print times, but also high impact on quality when set too high. That's a speed setting, so fast inside, reasonably slow on the outside. Full bore for the sparse infill. The very low moved masses give, again, quite some headroom for 24-7-0 beta 2, so we go somewhere between 20 and 200 for the features of our halfway reasonable speedboat. I need to repeat that these values most probably are no reference for your machine. Experiment carefully as this can induce tremendous shaking on your machine. We see a good boost of 2 minutes going down to around 13 minutes all in all. Though you might have realized that we haven't touched travel moves yet. As no printing is happening while the tool head is traveling, we can throw in almost everything we can with 2470 beta 2. 1000 mm per second at 120k acceleration and high cornering speed for the travel moves. Extremely fast traveling saves another close to 2 minutes for our speedboat, for free as it's without quality loss.
NX engineering allows us to use up to 0.5 mm line width, and we should max this out, as this saves another staggering 2 minutes. This reduces the print move count drastically. Drawing thicker lines simply means less lines to draw. So we're at an estimated 9 minutes now, what else can we do? Let's check the extruder settings. With 2470 being a Bowden printer, we need to go at least at 1.5mm retracts. But thanks to the powerful Voron M4 Bowden extruder I use, we can easily go at 120mm per second instead of the 30mm per second at default. We also eliminate setup, retract on layer change, as well as wipe while retracting. All this costs a lot of time and we don't really need these. Final step and very important to make all this work, make sure to alter the motion ability parameters in the printer settings according to a printer's capabilities. All tweaks we did were enough for a predicted 7 minutes 15 second print time, which is a relatively good orca slicer estimate for the 7.5 minute print. Let's sum up what we did in our quick and easy speedboat tutorial, take notes or make a screenshot to succeed in speedboats and to maybe boost your print times in general. We started with default Voron 0.1 profiles at the base speedboat settings in 37 minutes. Altering the cooling caps reduced print time for 7 minutes. We tweaked the flow rate cap as well as speeds and accelerations, which reduced the print time by around 50%. Increasing square corner velocities helped for another 2 minutes in reduction. The insanely fast travel moves on 2470 achieved the same, just as unifying line width to the max allowed 0.5mm. Increased retract speeds, eliminating set hops as well as wiping and retract count reduction granted as another 1.5 minute to the final estimation of 7 minutes and 15 seconds. Basically, it's not that hard to do, right? You need capable 3D printer hardware. That's on you. And that's the spirit as well as achievement of the speedboat race and the community around it. Did you notice that modern fast printers come with pre-sliced speedboats? And their hardware achievements were derived from the knowledge achieved by the participants of the speedboat race. Let that sink in before ranting about ugly speedboats in the future. With that said, let's load up some leftover Bambula PLA basic filament with Voron M4 extruder, let's turn on the cameras and lights, because according to the speedboat race rules, we record and show the whole print. Throughout the print, I'll comment and tell you about some secrets. So hang on and fasten your seatbelts. Alright speedboat friends, the print started and it's time for some secrets and additional info about yeah, um, everything that's on my bullet points here. You know what? Let's do that like kind of an interactive game. I tell you a secret or information and you tell me a secret or information in the comments. Deal? Okay, let's start with the first secret. What you hear right now are actually two recordings. There is the audio of the print and there is an overlay of a second recording, which is a dry run without part cooling. The reason is simple. If there would be only the original audio recording, you'd listen to fans only. It's so loud, you wouldn't hear anything of the motor movement. This is the original recording. The mix. The dry run. And the mix for your convenience again. So we have four recordings here. So there's the original print, which you see. There is the dry run with motor sound. There is the thermal recording on the bottom left. And there is a recording of mainsail, so that you see some telemetrics there. I have done this overlaying of audio recordings on all of my quote-unquote world's fastest 3D Benchy prints. Do you think that's cheating or a fraud? Monitoring the motor temperatures is very important, as we go at high currents and high voltage here. Motor A and B are at 2.4 amps and 58 volts. 
shut down temperature, so the ADC out of range temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. So we are at the safe side here. Secret? Or not secret, I don't know. Um, this is only necessary for those fast travel moves to achieve them. For everything else we set up in the slicer concerning acceleration and speed, um, 24 volts and probably currents way below 2 amps would be sufficient. But as you've seen, super fast traveling has a high impact on the print time. While talking without script here, question. What would you expect about a live stream on 24-7 printing? What do you want to see there? Another secret? The set axis is configured to be super fast. I have an acceleration of 10,000 mm per second squared there and uh, I think currents of 1.1 amps. That's why I chose the old version of the set axis without integrated lead screw motor, the Voron 0.0 set axis, because I could choose my own motor there. Talking about motors, um, the temperature measurements is done with a 3950 thermistor, which is attached by VHB tape. So nothing fancy, but it works quick and dirty. I wonder why so many default profiles have so slow retracts. Um, they're mostly about 30 to 50 millimeters per second, and at least with PLA, super fast retracts work perfectly. Is it just about wear, or is it... What do you think? Tell me in the comments, please. Here's a little YouTuber secret. My personal secret, because I'm quite slow at producing videos, as you might have realized. I need one hour per minute for producing a video like this. Um, this doesn't include the project, this is only script writing, voiceover and video editing. So a video like the Cable Max vs GDX Mac 3 tech comparison was a lot of work. I can't make a living of a YouTube channel like mine, like 24-7 printing. So yeah, you need a lot of dedication, a lot of passion and sponsors like Raid to yeah, get at least a bit of compensation for the hours you put into a video. Yup, there you have it. It's around 90 decibels because of the part cooling fans. That does not work without earplugs for me. That's harming your ears. Oh, and talking about comments, the 1500 millimeters per second video has up to date, let me see, over 1330 comments. Most of them congratulating me for stopping to smoke and for being sober. Man, really, it was such a pleasure to get daily comments like that, like up today. Thanks a lot for that. Though there was a misunderstanding. As I said, I am not drunk. I said that because I was aiming at that screw and couldn't locate it to fasten it. I don't have and never had a problem with alcohol. I still like drinking beer, both with alcohol, without alcohol. I like it. I am from Bavaria. So what do you expect? Nevertheless, that's no glorification of alcohol in any respect. Kids and grown-ups avoid alcohol as much as you can. Next to sugar, it's one of the worst drugs you can consume. By the way, do you know why my channel is called 24-7 Printing? I won't tell you now, maybe this year, but it's because of a project I did before I did YouTube and speed printing was just a side effect. Hello you, yes you, I have a problem now. I'm running out of secrets and of information I could tell you, so hmm. I am 41 years old, I don't have kids yet. We don't have kids yet because we want to spend our time otherwise, like with my YouTube channel, with 3D printers, with CNC machine, with a laser I got lately, and with, yeah, gaming. I really like gaming. PS5, PC, Steam Deck, Switch, I like that. Oh, and join our clan in Raid Shadow Legends. That was not a lie, it's there. And there are 29 slots left. We might meet there. 
So we're coming to an end of this print and of this video. Thanks a lot for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, ringing the bell. It was a pleasure for me to talk freely without script in the end here. I leave you alone with the quality check and I won't comment that one. So tell me, what can I do to get better quality? Other than printing slower, less acceleration, less speed. What do you see there? Bye bye, happy Easter.